Welcome students. So, we are in the process of discussing the ratio analysis is one of the important tool for the financial analysis or the financial statement analysis and till my last part of discussion we were discussing the uh, say preparation of we were learning how to prepare the multi step profitability statement and in that multi step profitability statement we uh, try to find out the gross profit ratio with the net sales and then we found out that the gross profit ratio for the grassroom industries is very 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 good is a wonderful ratio that gross profit is almost 50 percent and it is improving over the previous year. So, whatever the gross profit this company had in the previous year this means in the 2006 and 7 the profit has gross profit has gone up by 5 percent. In the uh, say uh, the year that is 2006 and 7. So, this is the GP ratio we have calculated and now we will proceed further with the other uh, in ratios in the multi step uh, income statement and in that multi step income statement we will be talking about the other ratios and other components. So, we can take here uh, the particulars, we can take here the particulars then it is amount and then it is the ratio then it is amount and it is the ratio amount and it is the ratio here the year is 2006 and 7 and here the amount year is 2005 and 6. So, these are the uh, this multi step income statement is continuing that after calculating the GP ratio now let us see how much is the uh, how much are the other ratios and then what is the overall profitability position of the firm. So, next item here we take after GP is so we will write here as the uh, I am continuing with the GP gross profit and the gross profit uh, the absolute amount of the gross profit was 4302 we are connecting the previous statement with this and it was 4302.34 and it is uh, ratio was 50. 0 0.01 then it is 2965 2965.95 and the ratio was 44.58 44.58 so this is the gp ratio gross profit ratio uh, and after this after this gross profit ratio we will be uh, calculating the other ratio so let's take the now subtract the other uh, expenses first so it is we'll be talking about the payment to employees how much payment is made to the employees payment made to the employees how much payment is made to the employees if you look at. So, uh, uh, looking at the payment made to the employees we will see here the information given and that is the uh, payment made to employees and provisions here it is the uh, schedule number 18 459.40 crores. So, we will be taking this item 459.40 40 crores this is the 459.40 crores and this is the 5.34 percent uh, that is the percentage of the net sales and it is 407.64 and this is 6.13 this is 6.13 this is another one uh, indirect expense head then is the selling and distribution and administrative expenses selling distribution and administrative expenses if you look at this head of expense selling administrative and distribution expenses then here we have this 1505.69 so this is 1505.69 and uh, this ratio is 17. Point Five zero. So, selling expenses are also quite high that is administrative and selling expenses they are also quite high and this is here it is 1181.33.33 and this works out as 17.75 17.75. So, it means this cost is also going down if you look at the trend of the cost. So, in case of the employees also it has the ratio has come down from 6.13 percent in the previous year to 5.34 in the year 2006 and 7 
and if you look at the next ratio selling uh, uh, means head of expense selling and distribution and expenses uh, and administrative expenses then it has come down from 17.75 percent to 17.5 percent. So, this is the selling and distribution expenses and then we have uh, say we will be talking about the next thing that is uh, say we will add into this the, the other expenses plus means other than this this is add plus we will be talking about the other incomes we will be taking here the other incomes because we will calculate the profit before depreciation in trust and tax. We will have to calculate the profit before PBDIT. So, for calculating PBDIT, we will be subtracting depreciation in trust and tax after calculating the ratio up to that level. So, we are including the other incomes and other incomes are given here as 168.49. In this year, other incomes were 168.49. So, if you talk about the other incomes, we will have to now talk about the operating incomes. We will not be taking the non operating incomes, we will be calculating the operating incomes. So, what is the operating incomes? Let us see now. We have the total income here, other income is 168.49. Out of this, we will be taking the uh, operating income only, and if it other incomes include operating income of 40.24 and 30.33 crores. So, we will be adding this operating income and after that we will be operating the adding the non operating incomes also. So, if you talk about the other incomes then it is the, so we will have to add this figure 40.24 and this has to be added here 40.24. So, this works out as positive part because it is income. So, 0 point plus 0 0.47 and here it is the uh, plus previous uh, year this income was 30.33. So, this is the uh, plus 0 0.45. So, this is the 47. So, other incomes operating incomes have in increased. So, first operating income was from the sales and then we calculated the GP and then we subtracted some indirect expenses and then adding some other operating incomes. So, now up to this part whatever the profit is coming that is the profit from the operating incomes that is the sales plus other incomes minus direct expenses direct and indirect expenses but operating expenses. So, now we will be calculating at this level if you uh, talk about we will be calculating the PBDIT this is PBDIT profit before depreciation in trust and tax and if you talk about the PBDIT this works out as 2377.49 2377.49 this is 27.64 uh, percent you can say as a ratio and it is 1407.31 and it is 17.75. So, it is now you see that the profit before depreciation in trust and tax has gone up from 17 or 18 percent to roughly 27 plus percent. So, it means there is a increase of 10 percent in the profit before depreciation in trust and tax also. So, this is again a good increase and if you talk about the other parts then you see that it is the other things will be taking into account. So, first we will be now taking the depreciation, depreciation and amortization, depreciation and amortization. So, if you take the depreciation and amortization here, uh, what is the amount of the depreciation and amortization? Let us check that amount and that amount of depreciation and amortization is uh, profit for exceptional items here would be depreciation and amortization. It is a depreciation and amortization. This is 317.91 for the current year. So, it is 317.91 and uh, previous year it was uh, 291, 291.64. So, it is uh, 3.7. 3.7 here and it is 4.38, 4.38 is the depreciation and amortization this amount. So, ratio the depreciation figure is also going down over the years. So, depreciation expenditure non cash expense though it is, but it is also going down over the years so depending upon the methods of depreciation, depreciation keep on changing. 
now we can calculate the operating profit before interest and tax OPBIT this is the operating profit before interest and tax. So, this the profit works out as 2059 2059.58 and in the other case it is 1115.97 and here it is uh, 23.94 and it is 16.17 OPBIT and now let us take the interest component. Interest is interest is the financial cost. So, how much is the interest component? If you look at the interest here triple 1.84 and then it in previous year it was 103.38. So, it is point triple 1.84 and then it is 100 103 103.38. 103.38. So, it means and the percentage of the uh, interest component is 1.3 not a very big amount not a very big amount that interest component interest cost is which was 1.55 in the previous year has come down to the 1.30 in the current year. It means uh, and it is evident also because firm has not borrowed more money from the external sources they are not depending much on the external sources they have not borrowed much money from the internal so external sources. So, yes the external this uh, interest burden has to be uh, minimum. Now, we talk add into this the other incomes other incomes and these other incomes will be non operating incomes we will have to calculate the non operating incomes now and for calculating the non operating income uh, the total non operating income becomes uh, 241.52 how it becomes 241.52 non operating income uh, we see that what is the non operating income here uh, we have here the one head of the income is the interest and dividend income this is non operating income and uh, uh, next part of the, the this income is the this this uh, amount is 168.49 and interest and uh, dividend is this much and other incomes amount is how much other incomes amount is which is non operating. So, this is 168.49 and out of this we have to subtract the operating income which we have already taken into account. So, you see that the total uh, uh, other incomes non operating is other incomes non operating is the interest and dividend income which is 113.27 113.27. Crores and uh, other income is 168.49, 168.49, and out of this we have taken some that is the uh, operating income which is included in the other incomes we have already taken that. So, we have to subtract it, and that amount was that amount was here that is 40.24. So, it is 40.24 we have to subtract. So, this is plus and this is minus 40.24. This is 40.24. So, if you uh, take this into account, so finally this income works out as uh, this is 1 241.52. 241.52 is going to be the non operating income 241.52. So, which we have to add here this is plus sign. So, it is 241.52 is the uh, other income and this is this ratio is 2.81 and here uh, earlier it was 189.61 and this is the plus 2 point this is 2.85. So, this is the other incomes that is non operating we are adding. So, what else is left here now if you talk about then it is the profit you can call it as profit before. Uh, exceptional incomes and tax profit before tax and ex extraordinary incomes or the exceptional incomes. So, this said profit is going to be how much if you calculate this tax then it is the we have added the other incomes. So, profit before tax and the exceptional income is 2189.26 and uh, 2189.26 and it is 1201.90. So, it is how much it is 25 point 25 point 45 percent and this works out as 18 point 07 percent. 
So, this is the profit before uh, exceptional incomes or extraordinary incomes and the tax. Now, we will be adding the income that is exceptional items plus exceptional income you can say exceptional income. Exceptional income, in, exceptional income is basically uh, some is once in a while, it is not a regular income, it is not a regular source of income, it is once in a while income. So, we will be taking only the exceptional income here. So, we have to show it separately, which is very less in this case, it is 37 point, how much it is? 10 and this is plus we are doing. So, this is plus 0 0.43, 0.43 is the exceptional income. Here in this case, it is uh, it was very less in the previous year that is 4.13 this is plus 0 0.06 is the exceptional income we have taken. And after taking this into account now nothing is left all expenses and incomes are taken into account and now we will have to calculate the PBT profit before tax. So, it is the profit before tax and if you calculate the profit before tax this works out as 226. Before profit before tax is a triple to 6, 0.36 and then in the second case it is 1206, 1206, 0 0.03 and this amount is 25.88 point, 25 and in this case it is 18.13. So, this is the profit before tax and now we will be talking about the, we will be making the provisions for the tax we will have to make the provisions for the tax and if we make the provisions for the tax. So, uh, we have two kind of the taxes current tax and then the deferred tax. So, we will have to make the total provision for the tax. So, if we make the provision for the tax we will be finding out that what is the current tax and what is the. So, we will be making the provision for tax. So, it is provision for tax and when we talk about the provision for tax, it is the current put a line here, then it is the current tax and how much it is current tax is uh, current income tax. We will see the how much is the current income tax here, current income tax is uh, when we talk about the current income tax, current income tax is uh, corporate dividend tax, general interim dividend appropriations, then profit after tax. So, yeah provision for the tax profit for tax is this much triple 2 yes triple 2 6.36 and 1206.03 is the profit before tax. Now, the provision for tax is that is the current tax 692.38 and then we have the total provision made is 692.38 and previous it was 369.82, but part of this provision 1.83 tax is deferred. So, it means we will be paying the total tax that is 692.38 minus 1.83. So, total tax will be this. So, provision for tax is current tax. If you talk about the current income tax, so this is 692.38, 692.38, 692.38 and then this is 8.05 big amount of tax and in the second case it is 369. 369.8.82, 369.82 it is 5.56, this is the current tax and now you have to add the defer tax and if you talk about the defer tax, so it is how much is the defer tax, which part of the tax is deferred, we have to add it back. So, it is plus 1.83, 1.83 and it is uh, you call it as plus 0 0.02 and in the second case it is plus 27 and it is how much plus 0 0.41. So, this is the deferred this part of the tax is deferred we made a total provision of 692.38 for the current and 1.83 amount of the tax is deferred. Uh, if you take into consideration the total income taxes we have paid is that is 190. So, we will say here the total tax paid, total tax paid is how much? This works out as 690, 690.55 and in the second case it is 342, 342 uh, 
0.82. So, if you calculate this as a ratio, this is 8.03, 8.03 and in the second case it is 5.15. This is the ratio we are calculating here. So, this is the income tax part uh, 690.55 and uh, this works out as 8.03 percent of the sale. Uh, 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 percent of the sales because sales is a common denominator and then we take the previous years which works out as so tax component has also gone up because the profit has increased so tax will be more so total income tax we have taken now the pat profit after tax how much is the profit after tax for the firm or the net operating profit you can say that is the 1535.81 and uh, 863.863.21 so it is 17.85 and 12.98 uh, 12.98 is the profit after tax so it is uh, almost 18 percent you can say profit after tax for the 2006 and 7 is 18 percent and previous year it was 13 percent profit that is the profit after tax so, this is the multi step income statement which is including the detailed analysis, detailed information and it is not only the absolute figures if you look at the profit and loss account it is including only the absolute figures but we have calculated here the ratios also and all the ratios easily show that where to exercise the control and how to cut the cost. So, if you look at the statement what we prepared in the previous lecture. If you look at and we calculated the gross profit, so uh, in that we only took two uh, things into account. One was the income from sales, that is a net sales after excise duty, and then we subtracted the manufacturing expenses, and then we subtracted the material cost. So if you look at the material cost, that was about 30 percent, not a big amount. So there is hardly any chance to reduce the material cost. But manufacturing expenses, yes, the company has already tried to reduce it. They have reduced both the expenses. Material also has been brought down in the uh, year 2006-7 as compared to the previous year and manufacturing expenses also have been brought down significantly from about say 24 percent to uh, 21 percent. So, 3 percent reduction is already exercised. So, in these two heads there is hardly any scope in the reduction of the further expense. If it is possible the firm can try but they are not going to gain much. But if you talk about and on the basis of that we have calculated the gross profit which is about say 50 percent in the current year and it was 45 percent in the previous year. If you look at now the present analysis here, this statement here, so we will take into account that which head of the cost is considered as on the higher side, we can think about that we should suggest to the firm that it should be reduced. Now, for example, if you talk about the employees payments, employee payments are also coming down, maybe uh, part of the uh, temporary workers that number of the workers has been reduced. So, you see the cost has come down from 6.13 to 5.34 percent of the sales. Selling and distribution expense is the one head where the cost seems to be little on the higher side, but it including it is including three things selling cost, distribution cost and the administrative uh, overheads. But you see in the administrative overheads we generally include the employees expense also. So, if you have segregated the uh, employees expense then what else is left in the administrative expenses stationary then uh, some you can call it as the office rent or some other kind of maintenance related expenses they could be. So, but there seems to be scope that yes selling and distribution and administrative expenses uh, can be thought of that if there is any possibility they can be brought down there is a chance and if they are brought down profit will improve. Then we talk about the other incomes, other operating incomes and they are quite good, maybe some you can call it as uh, some finished goods directly being sold in the market, these are other operating incomes, so not a big chunk, but yes and it is also growing, it was for uh, say 0.45 percent, 0.45 percent and it has become 0.47 percent, so uh, good growth. So, profit before depreciation interest and taxes. Uh, gone up by 10 percent, it was 17.75 percent and it has become 27.64 percent this time. And if you talk about the depreciation, next part is a non cash cost. This is a non cash cost which is uh, generally not in the hands of anybody. What are the amount of the fixed assets have been purchased? Those assets will remain with the firm. 
we cannot normally sell these assets because it that will affect the operating performance of the firm. So, normally depreciation automatically uh, by, by the choice of method of depreciation say for example, if it is a straight line method then the uh, amount of depreciation would remain same all through, but if it is a diminishing balance method or written down value method then yes the depreciation will come down. So, probably the firm is using written down value method that is why depreciation amount has come down from this place to this place. So, it is operating profit before interest and taxes about 24 percent which was 17 percent. So, again it is growing uh, as compared to previous year. Interest component is also not a very high uh, 1.3 and 1.5 though it is coming down, but it is not a very high. So, no scope if the money has been already borrowed, if the funds have already been borrowed by the firm then reducing this cost is not generally possible and it is not very high also. We have seen in the balance sheet if you look at the amount of the borrowed funds, loans and advances if you look at in the balance sheet here that is also not very high. So, probably here if you look at the secured loans it is about say how much it is say roughly 3000 crores. So, because of that the interest cost is very well managed is very much under control. So, nothing to worry about. Now, if we talk about the other incomes they are yes uh, you can call it is non operating incomes by way of interest on investments because this company has good amount of the long term investments. Similarly, some uh, building some rent is coming to them some interest is coming to them. So, all this non operating income is here and it is not big, but it is growing. Then we have the exceptional income, but it is a once in a while not a big amount it may come or may not come. So, profit before tax which was about 26 percent. Uh, say some 18 percent previous year has been grown up by 8 percent and it has become 26 percent almost in the current year 2006 and 7. Tax component is not in the hands. So, whatever the reported profit is the company has to pay the tax on that. So, it is not a very big amount. So, in this case if you talk about uh, the other component that is the total tax paid means the total tax due was uh, 692.38 and 369.82 crores, but part of that has been deferred to that will be paid in the next period. So, it means currently the tax being paid is that is 690.55 uh, crores which is about 8 percent and the tax component has gone up from the 5.15 percent in the previous year to the 8.03 percent. Maybe the company has not taken much deductions this year or the rate of the tax has gone up. So, the say finally year and tax the rate of the tax or you can call it as uh, miss that there is a, uh, it's, it's a it's a ratio to the sales not the tax. So, because of the variation in the sales the tax amount is also varying and the ratio is also varying. Finally, if you look at the profit after tax so that is growing it was 13 percent last year it has become uh, say 18 percent almost in this year and if you look at in isolation we say that profit is depicting a rising trend. So, it means this is considered as a good trend and uh, fine <coughs> that the company's profit is going up and expenses to some extent are going down and there is a need to look at the selling distribution and administrative expenses if it is possible they can be brought down and if these expenses are brought down then the profit after tax can further improve. So, this is the multi step uh, profitability statement or income statement and that helps us to know that what is the say profit position of the firm, what are the different heads of expenses, how that trend is going on and is there any possibility of reducing any particular type of the expenses. If it is possible we can reduce it, but if it is not possible then we sh cannot and the profit can be increased only by increasing the sales and at least keeping the cost under control. Other important aspects relating to this multi step income statement I will be talking to you in the next part of discussion. Thank you very much. Thank you.